shoot hi I'm the Morelander and this is Morelander EDC now I think it was roughly 12 months ago I can't remember exactly when maybe I should have probably had a look before I did this but I made some content on all of my pens because I'm asked quite a lot you know what's your favorite pen but in that piece of content we just looked at all of the pens that I own so I got my pencil case and opened it out and we just looked at everything now since then I have had some new pens and since then I've probably lost a few of the pens that were in there but I thought I'd show you my top five pens with two honorable mentions there are two honorable mentions now this will probably change, and yes, there's definitely more than five here, but um, I, I've got a few versions of, of, of some of them. So this is my 2022 top five favorite pens piece of content. And that, that is the caveat with that, and this, that is that it's, 2020, it's coming to the end of 2022, um, but as I'm picking up more pens and you guys suggest lots of very cool stuff to me so if you think that there's a pen that I should add to this list or maybe purchase and check out then yeah I'd, li I'd certainly like to hear that but for now here are my top five now what I'll do is I'll turn the camera around so that we can take a closer look at these now I have mentioned this in the last few videos so I definitely suggest subscribing and checking the link below so I recently made some content where I put a force patina on a copper wallet and I'm, I'm currently doing a giveaway on one of those wallets so if you'd like to be in for the chance to win one of those and you're already subscribed or you're thinking of subscribing definitely check the link in the description below so that you can see how to subscribe well subscribe but how to, how to enter enter that uh, that that competition for the giveaway um, but yes and also if you do really enjoy this content and you think I'd like to buy that guy a pint there is a new thank you button below where you can buy me a pint and I will certainly drink a pint in your honor but for now you know let's turn the camera around and take a closer look at my top five EDC pens of 2022 Okay, now the first one on here. Now, actually, let's. We, I could generally say that this is in reverse order. The first four of these are all in joint second place, whereas the last one that we'll look at is by far my favouritestestestest pen of them all. Um, but yeah, so all these next, this one including the next three, um, these kind of all take joint second place. It's always nice for everybody to feel special in the world, isn't it? Um, okay, so this first one is the Quarko Sport. Now, I want to say Quarko, or I want to say Quarko, um, mainly because this is a German company, so it's C-A-W-E. CO at the end. Um, I have contacted the German consulate here in the Kingdom of the Morelands, but they haven't unfortunately got back to me yet. So I'm guessing it's Kav Kavko or Kaveko, um, as the W is probably a V sound. Um, but anyway, you know, splitting hairs on the pronunciation, the anglicized version of how you would say this would be Quarko. Um, now these pens are ridiculous ridiculously EDC-able. They are constructed from plastic, uh, apart from a little metal bit that you have here on the end. There's also um, an accent here. I want to say that this is still plastic though. It certainly feels plastic. Uh, but it's a very super simple um, click to, to open these. And these are a ballpoint pen uh, using a medium tip. The construction of these, as you know, previously mentioned, uh, these are m made pretty much, I'd say probably 99.9% .9 from plastic. If you wanted to change the refill in here, you unscrew there, and then hopefully as you can see, there is the clicker mechanism so that you can actuate that. Uh, and then in here, if you pump that back, you can get out, out the refill. Um, I believe that these are fairly standard refills. I know I've seen these on other other pens, um, but um, pretty pretty easy to pick up if you didn't want to necessarily get one of the the, the, the actual Quarko versions. But again, you know these are crazy as far as how EDCable these are. Um, they're reasonably inexpensive as well. You can pick these up. I think these come in around about fifteen to twenty pounds. Um, 
and they're also available in I mean a lot of different colors I've got the gray and the red version here um, but pretty much if you can think of another color then I, I dare say they 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 have that color Quoco also make these uh, as mechanical pencils which are pretty much the exact same size as these um, and they also have different metal versions and they also have different um, fountain pen versions of these as well which are also really nice so yeah so that would be that would be my first the next two are also equally just as pocketable and these are the Fisher space pen now the two versions that I have here although they are both exactly the same pen um, as such so so this one uh, the black version that I have here um, is really very nice and stylish but then I also really like the brass version here mainly because having had this for a while now it's starting to develop a patina where you know you can see where the oils on my skins and, 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 and any sort of moisture that's that's got on here has started to create its own pattern on here. Um, but the space pen was was originally created for the space race during the 50s um, and this was made in such a way that they realized in anti-gravity that um, astronauts would have difficulties being able to write and it's one of the main reasons that when this came out into the public this pen just you know sold so many and this is the I believe there is there is a, a, a one with it with a clicker on it but this is the bullet version of the space pen um, but it, it comes in two parts so you pull the head off the shaft and then you put it onto the bottom there and then it turns into a full-sized pen there's a little rubber grommet here or at least a, a little rubber o-ring and all that does is make sure that when it goes on there it's a bit of an air seal and it makes sure um, that the cap and the pen stay together similarly with the similarly similarly with the black version here um, again it turns into a full-size pen with a medium nib to be able to replace the cartridges on here uh, you just unscrew it it's a full metal design uh, and here is the here here is the cartridge now this is one of Fisher's um, pressurized cartridges so whether you're writing underwater whether you're writing upside down if there was something on the ceiling and you wanted to write with this because it's pressurized it will make sure that that ink will constantly come out one thing to note with all of these pens that we'll have a look at today is that they're they're all very smooth and nice to write with which is one of the things that I, I is probably the, the reasons that they are on the on the on the top list for me um, when the ink comes out you don't get any of that glooping or bunching that you tend to get with certain inks when you write with them and they all write in a particularly nice and smooth manner with no breaks in the ink whilst you're writing um, but as far as EDCable are concerned, these are perfect. They can fit in a pocket, but also if you have like a notepad that has a binder with um, with something on the side that you can put, or even you'll see certain small wallets, um, certain small pocket organizers, um, these will be able to fit into the side of those perfectly, um, and they make they just make a really nice companion pen in your pocket with a knife or you know some other tools that you'll carry in your pocket as well so i suppose again although all these were kind of joint third joint second at number two uh, we have the fisher space pen now the next one on the list is probably a pen that i have owned the most of um, i know when i've talked about the jotter the sorry the parker jotter in the past I definitely have owned more of these pens than I have owned of any other type of pen. And that's mainly because I use, although I use them the most, I also have the, the, the tendency to lose these the most. But the Parker Jotter, I would probably say is generally the, the, the quintessential writing implement, or at least the quintessential stainless steel writing implement. Um, you see these all over the world, and, and in fact, as far as taking them apart, the Parker refills are probably the easiest refills to be able to find, no matter which country you're in. Um, this one is the blue, which is really handy that they've make sure that the end is in that color um, but they, they, they come in plenty of different colors 
lots of different style options with these as well this is the full stainless steel version but you also find that some of them are stainless steel and then they will have a plastic or a resin end to them and they come in blue green again you know whatever color you can think of you'll be able to find them with a different tip on the end as far as how these feel in your hand, they feel really, really, really nice. There's a very smooth um, profile when it comes from the tip all the way down the shaft into the into the main barrel of the pen here. Um, so whether you prefer to pinch it closer to the end or further away, uh, whether you prefer a finer hold on it or whether you prefer a wider hold, the Parker Jotter really does have everything that you need as far as, <sighs> it's the word that I'm trying to think of. I think what I'm trying to say is that whether whatever type of writing or at least however you hold a pen whilst writing because I thoroughly take into account that people although you know most people will hold a pen like this there are lots of other different ways that people hold a pen um, the jotter generally tends to satisfy most people and fit into your style of, of how you write uh, but what you'll tend to find with these is they all have the classic arrow head here um, but there are also different fletchings and that, that goes on the year of production. Um, there are also slightly different styles in which, the, uh, in which the clicker on the end or at least the way in which the arrow holds onto the clicker at the end uh, ever so slightly changes as well. But again these are dependent on the year. If, if you were a real kind of pen aficionado um, you'd probably be able to date either of these pens just by looking at them as, as I hold these in my hand. Um, but yes, the Parker Jotter really is an absolutely amazing pen and it's probably the main reason that as soon as I lose one, I just go out and I buy another one. And I thought I'd lost one. In fact, I have three of these. I thought I'd lost two of them and then I eventually found the other two. But definitely the pen so far that I have carried the most, I have owned the most and I've certainly bought the most of as well. So from the Parker Jotter, I'm now going to go to something a little bit more retro and a little bit more classic here. So this is the Bic, come on, let's get this into focus. The Bic 4 color. Now the, the original Bic 4 color is this larger one here um, in the white and orange. Constructed pretty much of plastic, although um, there are some springs and mechanisms in here that, that are metal, um, but I'd say 99.9% .9 of this is a, is, a, is a plastic pen. Still made and designed in France, um, but there is now a smaller version of it, which, again, when we're looking at EDC pocketable pens, certainly makes it easier to be able to throw this into the pocket. The downside, if there is one, as I'm sure you can probably imagine, is that the refills in here don't last as long um, but I know that BIC are now selling the refills or the cartridge refills for these so rather than just throwing them away they're trying to make sure that everything is a little bit more sustainable so rather than just picking up a new one then you can rechange um, the refills in these. I haven't seen any of the smaller ones but at the point of making this content I haven't seen any of the smaller ones. Um, I'll, I will have a double check just to see if there are some more of those in the future. But this is, I, and I, I mean this really is a retro classic, I had one of these when I was at school in the 80s, in the 90s, and absolutely love these, but what you have is the option of four different colours, red, black, green and blue, you push it down like that and then it will pop back, it will pop out. To get it to go back you just have to semi-press one of the others, or if you're using green and you want to go to blue you can full press the other one and it will, it will come out as well. Um, Although, yes, there is some kind of retro, uh, I love these because I used to use these whilst as a, as a youngster, the ability to have four different colours and, you know, being able to EDC four separate pens certainly has it at its advantages. So that was the top four. This next one really is my number one, and it is the Bastion Bolt Action Pen. Now, how long have I had these? I probably only had these for about 18 months. I got my first one, I saw this on somebody else's channel, and I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up one of those. I've never owned a bolt-action pen before. And yeah, as soon as I got it, I was like, 
yeah, both this pen, yeah, I love it. Um, it's a beast. I, 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 it's the only adjective that I can think of when I ever describe this pen, and it is an absolute freaking beast. The main reason and the way in which I quantified that is I just take this off here, and you look into here, and you can see that the walls of the shaft on this pen are about a millimeter, maybe a millimeter and a half of solid stainless steel. And I can quantify that in the fact that if I take the refill, Oops, I've just dropped the spring. If I take the refill, there is no step down as it goes into this. So this, the, the, the thickness of this pen is exactly the same all the way down. And then when you look at the bolt action section here at the top, it's actually even thicker. It's probably maybe a, a two, maybe two and a half millimeters. Let me just pick up that spring. It's constructed of completely stainless steel um, and the advantage of this is that it uses park pen refills here is the end which just goes on and it screws on as well now there is a thing with this and the fact that they they also have an o-ring washer on here to make sure that when it screws on it screws on and it has a nice tight um, connection here at the end but the way in which it works it has a j style bolt action here at the top and the spring in here does an amazing job of giving you a, a just an incredible positive click it's this it's possibly the most fidgetiest pen i mean i do like fidgeting uh with the fisher space pens and, and spinning them around in my hand if you're the type of person that clicks a lot with your pen and uh you really piss off your colleagues this is going to do it even more just sitting there flicking these from side to side like that is crazy fun and crazy fidgety the big difference with this over all of these other pens is the weight there is a lot of weight in this pen. It weighs more than all of the other pens combined. But that weight doesn't feel overpowered when it's in your hand. It still writes incredibly smoothly. Um, I, I generally go for a, a pen that is a little bit more narrow, like the Jota. But with this, I don't know, there's, there's just something very comfortable in the hand whilst I'm writing with it. The pocket clip at the top is just, again, another huge piece of stainless steel. Um, it's very springy, but also very tough. And if you wanted to, there are two bolts here that you could take it off and then uh, screw those bolts back into it. So you just have a large hunk of, of stainless steel in your pocket. The other advantage to this one is if you were walking down a dark alley and somebody tried to try to accost you, just take this out and hit them with it. The beastliness, the weight of this um, will certainly help you to defend yourself if you needed to. But they are, they are my top five and this is my top number one of all of those. Now I did mention that there are, in fact let me hold this just to make sure that I can keep this so it all stays in focus. Now I did mention that there are two honourable mentions when it comes to pens. And the first honourable mention really comes down to pens that we use the most and there should be no snobbery in EDC. And the main reason that I say that is, you know, it's great to be able to walk around with a $700 Sebenza in your pocket and, you know, just feel kind of freaking cool that you own a knife that costs that much. But as I mentioned, there should be no snobbery. And in the fact that the Bic Crystal, this is still one of the best and one of the most used pens out there. Full stop, period. There's a reason why this pen has literally been around for centuries. In fact, I believe, uh, if I you know, know my Bible as well as know my Bible, when Jesus went to the top of, um, of, of, of Mount Everest to get the Ten Commandments from, um, from God, he got to the top and God went, have you got a pen? And he's like, damn it, I haven't got a pen. But this was the pen that he, he normally carries. It's been around that long. Super simple. It has this, uh, it has a clear 
uh, plastic crystal um, shaft on there so that you can perfectly see how much um, how much ink you have left you can take these out I know that Bic have started to make more refills for these so that it, rather than just throwing it away um, you can you can get a refill for it but they have also released these full metal versions uh, so this is this is full metal in fact hopefully you can hear there i don't think it's i don't think it's stainless steel i think they're actually aluminium uh, but also to help as well there is also a little thing on the end that you can push so that you can you can get the pen out um but yeah these are really a timeless classic very similar to the big four color i think the big crystal if you want to rock one of these 24 7 then you rock the hell out of this pen because it's still and will always be an absolutely amazing pen. The last second, or at least the second honorable mention is, is a new type of pen um, that, I, 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 well, I say new, it's new to me. I know these pens have been around a while. And this is the poker pen, the pocket pen. I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced, but similarly, to the uh, the Fisher space pen, the way in which this works is that you pull them apart, and then the the actual pen itself goes into the barrel of the cap. This is one of the Wrights in rain versions, um, and these these are um, kind of one use pens, although they do still have plenty of ink in there. Um, but again, as far as being able to be pocketable, if I bring up the Fisher, if I bring up the Corco you can see that these are really pocketable um, EDC pens. The main reason that I've had this as, um, as an honorable mention is, as I say, you know, these are completely new to me. I've only started using this within the last few months, um, but already I can see that this should be on everybody's EDC list as far as pens are concerned. Um, very light, it's completely constructed unless, you know, there's something in there that I've not been able to see. It's completely constructed from plastic. The Wrights and the Rain version, although I'm not too sure if the normal version of it does this. So if it, if you know that it does, then please um, please comment below. Uh, but the right right in the Rain version um, will write underwater. I also believe that it's pressurized as well. Um, but again, like I say, you know, I'm, I'm certainly new to these uh, and will will definitely be carrying more of these in the future. I know who is a huge fan of these, and that's Dom over at uh, Max Level EDC. Dom's got some really nice um, content on different pens, so highly recommend that you check him out as well. And also definitely check out uh, Ron from... Ron Kwok, um, he makes, he's, he's a big fan of, um, of um, fountain pens and Morris Moves as well, also loves his fountain pens. He's got some absolutely amazing um, notepad and uh, pen kind of content, um, especially also around that kind of being able to take notes and, and effectively use notes to, uh, to help your productivity through the day. So yeah, three, three channels I definitely recommend checking out after you've finished this content, of course. So there you have my top five EDC pens, plus two honorable mentions, which I thought it was important to add into there, mainly because if you were to take the pens that I use the most, you know, yeah, the, those big crystals use a lot. And plus, only having just picked up this uh, poke pen, pocket pen, um, I think this will be added to the list soon. It'll be difficult to try and work out which one of the other pens um, needs to be bumped off. Or maybe instead, I'll just do a top 10 EDC pens of 2023. Now, I thought what I'd do, just getting towards the end, is just, just maybe some advice, if you needed some advice, I guess. Um, when you when you're kind of working out what is the best pen for you because I know on other pieces of content I'm often asked oh you know what is the best backpack for this or what is the best pack pack back blah, 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 for whatever um really the, the, there is never a best X for X and it really comes down to quite a few different things, especially when it comes to pens as well. So one of the first things that I always consider when it comes to a pen or a writing implement 
is the type of pen that it is. So um, as far as that is concerned, I mean, well, hopefully you can see my pen of choice is a ballpoint pen. Um, I just find that they are easier to maintain. Um, they seem to work on average a little bit more than I've found with other pens. Now by, by other pens, I mean things like fountain pens. Uh, some people prefer rather than not to use a pen and to use a pencil instead, maybe a car, like a big beefy carpenter's pencil, or maybe it would be a mechanical pencil. Again, I just prefer for my use and the way that I carry and you know maintenance, all of that sort of stuff. For me, the, the type of pen that I prefer is a ballpoint pen, but it's completely different for everybody. I've been talking to quite a few YouTube uh, friends recently and they've all been talking about um, uh, fountain pens and how they EDC a fountain pen instead. Really takes me back to high school with fountain pens and having to change the ink and them running but I, I'm certainly open-minded to that so I'm probably going to pick up a couple of fountain pens to, to see how, how well they last. The next one that I think of is, is the materials and, and this helps to cover quite a few different things so I'm just going to pick out two pens here so we have uh, a stainless steel pen like uh, the Parker Jotter. With stainless steel you get the advantages that these are very tough or the other type that you can go for is a plastic pen and that also comes down to other things like how well they're constructed. There's nothing to say that these are bad pens, in fact, you know, it's, it's within my top five, ten, because they're very light, very pocketable, and if they do break, they're pretty inexpensive to be able to replace. You can pick these up for a, a pound. Whereas with something like the Jotter, it, it's got a little bit more weight in your hand. It feels like you've actually got some substance there whilst you're writing. Um, with them being stainless steel, they are a little bit more robust, but they do cost a little bit more. So there's, there's quite a few different things, but I think mainly the materials and the construction is a second thing that you can you should consider. Now the last thing, which is the reason why the Bastion pen really is the, the top one of my list, mainly comes down to how it feels in the hand. And really I suppose this should trump everything else. You might find something that is plastic but you prefer a stainless steel or you might find something that is um, a mechanical pencil that you usually go for a biro just the way that it writes everybody's hands different some people have got some strange way that they hold pens uh, some people prefer a thinner pen some people prefer a wider pen this is quite a wide pen compared to other ones it's it's definitely weighty this one pen weighs more than all of these pens combined but when it's in my hand i don't know it just feels really nice. There's a nice weight to it. I thought originally when I got this that I'd actually struggle writing with it, but I don't. I actually find that prolonged periods of writing with this is actually just a little bit more comfortable than compared to some other pens. That might be because it's just wider than something like the Jotto, which I did use for a very long time, but it might also be a combination of the of the ink, the refill that's in there, and, and definitely the weight. Uh, the, definitely the weight is something that I, I, I do consider with this pen. But So they're, they're my three things to consider when you're thinking about getting an EDC pen. I suppose one of the other things that I forgot to mention in the material and construction probably should have come with size in there as well. You know, depending on whether you prefer something that is more pocketable like the Quarko, um, or whether it's a larger full-size pen, um, again, kind of comes under that construction as well. But, you know, pen type, material and construction, and which probably trumps them all, is the size, the, the feeling, sorry, not the size, but the feeling in your hand, how it feels to actually write with that pen. I hope that helps. It's a little bit of a ramble towards the end, but um, I know I get adv asked advice on quite a few different things, and I thought maybe on content like this, maybe it would probably, maybe it would probably be useful if I just, you know, added a little bit of advice towards the end. 
Um, now, some of these pens uh, I will have some affiliate links to, so I'll leave some affiliate links in the description below. It's to no extra cost to you. It just means all of these pens that I, are, I have here, they're all my pens. I purchased them with my own money. It just means that content creators like myself and other content creators, we, we get to use some of that money to help us to create more content like this. Um, I'll also leave some of my social media links below as well. But for now, stay safe, stay Morelander, and stay EDC. I think I rambled in that last bit. Hopefully it makes sense. I hope it does. It's the strangest thing giving advice because just like pens, everyone is different and everyone will give different advice and everybody will receive advice differently. I feel like I'm talking to my kids at the moment. Not that, not that, that I mean, fatherly advice, weird. Anyway. Um, Cool.